The power of the human spirit is most often revealed in the face of adversity. Revelations of character, hope, resilience, and more. For this episode, we pay tribute to the power of the human spirit and to the power of forgiveness with a visit to Candle's Holocaust Museum. Welcome to The Hote. This episode brought to you by Wabash Valley Community Foundation, for good, forever. Indiana State University, there's more to blue. And Envisionary Media, envision the possibilities. Candles Holocaust Museum and Education Center is a small physical facility with a really major impact. Each year we're fortunate to have over 15,000 visitors from all over the world come and spend time with us at Candles. Of those 15,000, 8,000 are school children. Founded by Holocaust survivor Eva Moses Kaur in 1995, Candles Holocaust Museum and Education Center was created to educate people about the atrocities of the Holocaust through exhibits and by sharing Eva's powerful personal experience. We seek to teach people what happened, the facts, the history of the Holocaust, but it's really important to understand that the Holocaust isn't just a history lesson. While that's important, it's a lesson in human behavior and how making choices, how we treat one another, really um, impacts the world in which we live. Hi, how are you? Hi, nice Eva. To Good to again. see you. Welcome to Candles. Thank you, thank you. We're here with Eva Kaur, the founder of the Candles Holocaust Museum. So tell me a little bit about why you decided to create Candles. At, in 1995, I have been already lecturing for 17 years. And I didn't have a place where I could show all the artifacts, the pictures, the details. And I usually just lectured at schools. And when people wanted to have an interview, I had no place to interview. Mm -hmm. So it was a restaurant, my real estate office. So I said, I needed a place. The second reason was my sister died two years earlier. So I struggled for two years. What would I do in her memory? And I decided with all that was going on, I was going to try to open a museum. I did not know that it would be really successful, but I knew that people were interested in the story. Adolf Hitler, leader of the Nazi party, had come into power as Fuhrer of Germany in 1934, the same year Eva was born, and had quickly begun exerting influence and power throughout Europe. The Nazi party rose to power. Hitler was yelling on the radio, on the news, every day. I could understand enough German that he was yelling he was going to kill all the Jews. And when I asked my parents, who is Hitler? And why does he want to kill all the Jews? They told me, don't worry about it. Hitler is far away. He will never get to our part of the world. But he did. He did. When Eva was 10, she and her family were forced from their home in Hungarian-occupied Romania and taken to the regional Jewish ghetto. And how old were you when this was all happening? Ten. I was 10 years ten. and three months. And so how did you feel about this? What was going through your head? Do you remember any of that? I didn't really understand. And I don't think when you are involved in the middle of such a destructive behavior, I don't think the fact that I was 10, I understood any less than my parents who were grown up. It was crazy. Absolutely crazy. After four weeks, her family and the other captives of the ghetto were forced into railroad cattle cars and transported to the Auschwitz-Birkenau concentration camp. Their experience at the arrival platform there changed life forever. We didn't even know where we were. We were standing holding my mother's hand as the Nazi was running, yelling in German, twins, twins. And he noticed Miriam and me and demanded to know if we were twins. My mother asked, is that good? And he said, yes. My mother said, yes. And that is the way she was pulled on one side. We were pulled on the other side. 
Eva and Miriam never saw their family again. At Auschwitz, Eva and Miriam were subjected to cruel medical experiments at the hands of Nazi doctor Joseph Mengele. Nicknamed the Angel of Death for his sadistic, often deadly genetic research on human subjects. While many of their peers at Auschwitz died as a result of inhumane treatment, Eva and Miriam survived to see the liberation of the camp in January 1945. So you remember that day? And oh, yes. How, oh, yes. What, what did you, did you know what was happening? Did you? No, no. We woke up in the morning and it was quiet. After many months of artillery bombing, it was completely quiet. So we went outside and we saw at the one side of the road, lots of people, they were wrapped in white camouflage raincoats and they were smiling from ear to ear. I had no idea who they were. But one thing was clear to me, they didn't look like the Nazis mm -hmm. and that was good enough. So we ran up to them and they gave us chocolate and cookies and hugs. I had no idea who the Soviets or the Russians or never heard about them. But they had so, chocolate and cookies and hugs, so they, they couldn't they, be that they, bad. That, that was good enough for me. <laughs> From there, the freed Auschwitz captives were taken to a refugee camp in Russia, where they stayed for nine months. We came back to Romania in October of 1945 to find out that no one survived. And that was probably one of the saddest days in my life. After the war, the sisters emigrated to Israel after their family farm was confiscated by the communist Romanian government. After she met and married American tourist Mickey Kaur, a fellow Holocaust survivor living in the U.S. since 1946, Eva moved to the United States to live with him in Terre Haute. From here, she and Miriam began searching for and locating other survivors of the Auschwitz medical experiments. So are you in this picture here? Yes. Here is me and here is my sister. And these are all the little children whom you saw in the liberation picture as grown-ups. Here is the Nazi doctor when we are in Auschwitz and I'm signing here declaration of amnesty, a letter of forgiveness. Forgiveness is a way of healing oneself from pain, trauma, or tragedy. The Holocaust Museum is a legacy of Eva's personal journey. The original building was firebombed by an arsonist in 2003 and burned to the ground. Eva vowed to rebuild, and with the help of an outpouring of community support, including thousands of dollars donated by school children, organizations, and individuals nationwide, a new museum was rebuilt and opened in 2005. The arsonist wanted to squelch the message, but it actually had the opposite effect, right? Eva had a choice. She could have said, this, there was too much hatred here, I, this is too much for me to deal with, I'm gonna close the doors or I could rebuild. She chose to rebuild, sort of bigger and better than before, um, and again, the message has spread farther than we ever could have hoped. While many of Candle's exhibits are historic artifacts, the museum's newest exhibit is state-of-the-art technology, an interactive video presentation of Eva, allowing museum guests to have conversations with the pre-recorded image of Eva. Hello, Eva. Hello, how are you today? I'm good, how are you? Okay, let's have those questions. <laughs> <laughs> Is the, that has to be weird for you. Yeah. Tell me about your sisters. I have three sisters. My older sister, Edith, my middle sister, Alice, and my twin sister, Miriam, was 30 minutes older. So this is way, way cool. And quite honestly, great to have this for for the future of right. the people that visit here and for the kids that come in here. And you know, on days when you're not able to be here, you're still here in this facility. They can talk to me. Yeah. I always wanted to live forever. Yeah. And I guess <laughs> that physiologically is impossible, but uh, that is as close I, as I can, can get to living forever. Oh yes, for sure, for sure. Well, Eva, I want to thank you for this wonderful tour and for you thank sharing. Thank you for your interest. Yeah. Well, thank in you for sharing all your memories and, and for sharing your story of forgiveness and for the impact that you've had in Terre Haute and our community. And uh, I'm really grateful for everything that you do. And I want to thank the hologram as well. So thank you, Eva. Thank you for asking me, and you're welcome. Thanks for joining us for a visit to Candle's Holocaust Museum. You can check out all of our episodes on the show's page of terrahote.com. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. We'll see you next time on The Hote.